Good evening, everybody out there in internet land. My name is Troy Bernier, and this is the Miami International Science Fiction Film Festival. And today we're going to talk about the movie called The American Alien. That's right. It sounds exactly what you might be thinking. Uh, we have Mr. Rodrigo Rodriguez joining us all the way from Austin, Texas. He's the director of the film, and The American Alien is a genre-bending short comedy drama sci-fi where this absurd journey of a gray alien who gets caught at the U.S.-Mexican border and is processed into the U.S. immigration system. His fellow detainees can see that he is not one of us, and U.S. bureaucracy only sees a small brown-skinned boy. He befriends Yesenia, a seven-year-old El Salvadoran girl who has been separated from her mother to two navigate the bizarre bureaucratic world of the asylum-seeking migrant. So here we are. Mr. Rodrigo. How are you, sir? Yeah. How are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And um, this short is going to be playing at Misi Feed 2024 this year. And we'd like to know a little bit more about you. Who sure. are you? Why'd you do this? <laughs> well, I've been working in film off, you know, well, uh, since I was in college. Mm -hmm. um, it's been an absolute passion. I've I've done work in over 25 different countries, uh, done all sorts of work from producing, directing, lots of um, uh, produced with Michael Moore on his TV show, uh, TV Nation. Uh, I've done a lot of work with Discovery Channel. I've chased UFOs on, uh, on TV shows like Borderline Paranormal and Sightings um, and directed a lot of uh, commercials for a lot of soap. Mm. So just uh, overall, all sorts of little, all sorts yeah. of parts of the industry. Um, yeah. And I have uh, two companies, um, Rio Films, which uh, is where I work as an executive producer. Um, and that's mainly doing content for Hispanic and bilingual audiences. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also have a motion picture equipment rental company, which is called Citrus Digital. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that keeps you busy. Yeah, so you you you've been in the industry for quite some time. Yes. Um, so so tell us a little bit about what inspired uh, the production of the American Alien. Sure, it it's actually goes a little bit to what I was just saying. I, I spent so much time doing uh, work for other people. Yeah. Um, that I wanted to apply my experience and knowledge to something entirely of my own without a client uh, supervising. Mm -hmm. So I wrote and directed uh, this uh, piece, a right. short film, um, right. and part of my desire to continue to work more into narrative and documentaries and basically wake up in the morning and do only what I want to do. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. Yeah, but the American yeah. alien is... But, but the American uh, alien is, but the American alien is not just your average film. It's, no, it's no, really uh, sending. Uh, a, its subtext is 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 not the common common thread, you know. Absolutely, um, and there is a backstory to it. Um, about a year and a half before the American alien went into production, I personally went in and was embedded with the U.S. Um, Border Patrol on a documentary project, a, a straight up, you know, documentary project on, um, on, you know, just exactly what's going on at the Mexican U.S. border. And so I was actually in there. I mean, I was actually part of chases. I was part of interrogations. I, I really saw it from the inside. Right. And that experience just left me with this, um, you know, all sorts of feelings. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I saw remarkable humanity and I saw remarkable inhumanity. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to artistically and creatively put out, interpret what I saw. And that's what drew, drew me with this idea of, well, what would happen if, and because I've always been a sci fi freak, right? I've always been into UFOs and such. and so what would happen if an alien got caught in the U.S. 
Border Patrol, uh, U.S. immigration system. <laughs> and I went from there. Wow. Wow, that's something. So yeah. this film is, is going to send a message to a lot of people. Uh, you know, what do you, what do you hope the viewers take away from it? Well, our festival run really has just recently started. We, we, we played at the Paris International Children's Festival and we played in San Pablo, Brazil recently, oh. uh, and in Louisiana, the Bayou Film Festival. And I go, so I've only been able to attend two festivals, mm -hmm. um, mainly because of geography. Um, but I'm amazed at how how riled up people get over the the the, the presentation, the the story. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I I want to do something to show absurdity, um, but I find that a lot of people are just plain upset after they see it um, because they are so passionate about the subject. Wow. Um, so I find I find their audience reactions very interesting uh, and unexpected, but. You know, you, you do your best as a filmmaker. You let and you, you let it out, and mm -hmm. how people interpret it is how people interpret it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. And and how did you set up some of these scenes? Matter of fact, let's let's take a look at the trailer. Can we do that? I'm gonna, I'd like to show the trailer. Sure. One second. Where are you from? Country of origin? How you stay right here? Wow. So, so where, where, where did you get the, the, uh, the, the ability to make something, make this where it looked like you're inside uh, one of these holding facilities? How did you pull that off? Sure. Well, everything was shot in three days. Um, Amazing. Wow. Three days. Well, and that just goes, I mean, um, you know, after years of ex production experience, you just yeah. make it happen. Um, but I had, you know, a wonderful crew. Um, the director of photography, uh, Carlos Diaz Munoz, I thought they did an incredible job shooting this. It's shot anamorphic, mm -hmm. uh, which was a lot of fun. Um, but we we took a um, a warehouse in uh, in San Antonio, Texas, and we were able to convert that into the um, that holding facility. Mm -hmm. uh, the exteriors that are supposed to be taking place by the Rio Grande are actually shot in a park. Um, in San Antonio, um, and then first we mix in, of course, real aerials from the area. But um, yeah, and we thought we did all that during COVID, too. Um, well, so that was pretty yeah. ambitious. Um, yeah, working in a very controlled environment. Well, let's say at the end of COVID, not not in the middle of it, but at the very end. Sure. Of COVID. Sure. We were still shooting with uh, protocols, even though a lot of people have stopped shooting with protocols. Can you can you share um, a moment uh, or something that was unexpected that left a lasting impression on you when you were doing during, during the production? Yeah. Um, well, you know, like with anybody, you, you work really uh, in uh, as a filmmaker. You work real hard to find actors that. Um, you know, will help you create your vision mm -hmm. and cast the right people. Yeah. Um, and I certainly did that. And I remember you know, working on table reads and working on character development and discussing their character arcs. 
and doing all that you know, before we shot. Mm -hmm. But what I was stunned in, in many ways was just um, how much my acting team brought to the project. Um, mm -hmm. each, and every, each and every one of them just really uh, passionately embraced their, their roles and um, right. thought they did a great job, the whole cast did. Wow, man. Well, that's that's good. Um, and especially um, um, our our main uh, alien, uh, who was a twelve year old boy. And as far as the casting went for this, uh, a lot of people in San Antonio. It's not really a. It is kind of a small city, but I would assume it's it's busier than it used to be. Say this is the last time. Well, I not all the cast was from San Antonio. I, 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 I think very few of them were. Uh, most were from Texas. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, most were not from San Antonio. Maybe uh, the extras, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the extras were certainly from San Antonio. But most of the main cast was coming in from wherever they came in from. Right, right, right. Um, well, let me. So, so it was shot there in in the San Antonio area. Um, but you know, this this what what has been the most challenging part of your production? Um, you know, you did it in three days, which means you don't have that many problems. <laughs> but, but we had but a lot. Of problems. Um, I, I, it, it was the alien making sure the alien, uh, well, making the decision of how to make the alien come to life. I mean, right? We, we have a we had a limited budget. We really couldn't go with, um, you know, doing a an animated um, alien. We couldn't really go with, you know. A puppet Tron. Uh, you know, we thought about all yeah. of these things. Uh, motion. You know, we we you know we we did tests with um, you know wearing a blue suit, the dots. You know, doing all that tracking thing. Mm -hmm. And um, in the end, we we kind of went old. We went with a combination. Um, we went with prosthetics uh, to create the alien. Um, you know, the actual alien, but. Uh, where we really sold it was in the eyes. Uh, those are all uh, animated. Okay, yeah, because you made them blink. Yeah, which is so not, that's all not easy to. That's, yeah, so that's, that's motion tracking animation, and then we had um, you know all sorts of sound effects added to to make it all more real. Mm -hmm. And then on top of everything else, literally every frame is motion tracked to some degree, uh, smoothing out. The prosthetics and the look of the alien. So, right, right. Uh, yeah. Wow. Man. So, man. So, you've been in a few festivals so far, and these are not sci fi festivals. Um, are you submitting the film to sci fi festivals? Other yes. Than uh, yes. That's uh, we're, we're, wanting to, we're planning to do several others. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. You know, obviously, it's a mixed genre piece, and sometimes, you know, some of these festivals. What is it? A comedy? Is it a drama? Is it? You know, and I'm like, well, well, yes. It's yeah, they. Yeah, a lot. A lot of festivals. They, some people may not understand how to program it. Yeah, um, so and, they, they they're looking at everything like this. Um, that happens. But that just comes from um, um, a long history of Mexican cinema, where you know we don't have a problem um, combining a western with with wrestlers and with uh, uh, space creatures, um, yeah, and, and and music, and then have, might as well have a, a song in there. Um, right. You know, mix mixing genres is is just uh, part of our culture as filmmakers. Right. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Uh, which takes me to another question. But uh, looking forward, are they are there any genres, roles, or types of projects you're particularly eager to explore? Um, you know, any more science fiction from you? You know, do we expect expect this? Uh, I certainly have a, a, a fantasy project that I have a, a, a completed script on. It involves ghosts, um, Mexican, well, Hispanic culture. Sure. Um, okay. It is a comedy. Okay. Um, so uh, there'll be more of this kind of stuff for me. Okay. 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 Good. Good. Um, how do you view the evolution of film and storytelling with the advent of new technologies and platforms? Do you think that this shapes uh, or this provides additional opportunities for actors and filmmakers? 
No. Uh, I don't. I, I think uh, we're on the edge of some drastic changes. I can only, you know, I can talk to you about what I'm experiencing, especially in the last 60 days. Um, in the last 60 days, I have um, abandoned the use of um, storyboard artists. Mm -hmm. As I'm doing all of my story, I can't draw. I'm doing all of my storyboards uh, through AI, mm -hmm. uh, through AI storyboard programs or through um, AI imaging programs. Mm -hmm. um, and storyboard artists that I've used for years, I I hate to uh, talk to tell them, but no, I won't be using you anymore. I, I, there's no reason to. I'm creating photorealistic. Uh, storyboards. Um, that's one thing. Um, I recently did my first uh, use of an AI voiceover. Wow. Um, okay. And you know, if you just just Google it, there's there's yeah, there are a lot of tools out there. AI voice um, um, programs out there uh, uh, online. You can pick from you know hundreds of voices you can change their inflection right and it's like a about 30 dollars a pop um uh last week i had to write a script on something that i really really hated to do which was like bank uh, a bank a mortgage financing commercial right, which i have no interest in uh i used ai to help me write the script um I can foresee a point within two to three years for some kid working in a garage right. going to right. write, create a complete AI movie. Um, I don't know where that puts us all. Well, I could say this much, and uh, I'll say two things. One is that the less less experienced viewer the viewer that has the least amount of experience or the least amount of patience perhaps will be more inclined to watch a film that's all AI versus someone who is accustomed to watching film. They're going to see the differences. Um, this Porsche, this this target area that I'm focusing on, I I call it, which it was educated to me. You know, I, I learned from Dean Lyon. He was one of our first sci-fi citizens um, that came. He was a VFX. He's, he used to be the VFX supervisor for Lord of the Rings franchise, and he gave several talks about the uncanny valley, that portion of of, of animation which. Uh, is, is animation and then reality. Yes, it's getting closer and closer and closer, but we're still not there yet. And the trained eye can see the difference between the two. So um, I don't know. It's getting very close. It's, it's getting very close, but I think that there will be a lot of people who are fooled just like they've been fooled for you know already many years with mm -hmm. content on social media. But there will always be folks that can say, oh, that's not. I can see that that's that's it's fake. Yeah. What's going yeah. on there? It should but, be interesting. But, to see but that happens. number, yeah. But that number of people are getting smaller and smaller. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'll we'll see. You know, the festival has an AI session. We have an AI session that will only play on the virtual uh, channel um, because there's it's not ready yet. It's not ready for prime time. So um, you know, we'll see. We'll see when it comes to that category. I know that there are a lot of advances. I know that uh, there's, you know, there are lots of tools and bells and whistles that can help us um, produce stuff. You know, we use we use AI to produce content and things as well. Whereas uh, in the past, we probably would need uh, to spend a lot of money and, and have quite okay. a few more people. Um, okay. But now we're able to do it with uh, less money and less people. Certain things, um, and and it actually comes out better. Yeah, that's 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 the amazing thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, couple. Let's go into let's go into a fun parts now. So, sure. what was your favorite film last last uh, your last favorite film you watched? 
Um, boy, uh, yeah, the poor things. I thought poor things was really amazing. Poor things. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, um, and I also saw Dune um, uh, last week, mm -hmm. which I just loved. Awesome. Okay. They cha it's changed a bit from the original, right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's good. Good. Yeah. Good work. Really yeah. good work. Yeah. 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 Um, Star Trek or Star Wars or both? Or Star Trek. Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a complete Trek nut idiot. I'm an idiot, Trek idiot. <laughs> Trek fan. I don't, I don't think there's a, a series. I don't think there's anything they haven't made that I haven't seen. Awesome. Yeah, so, what totally. what you, you, you think of third season, Picard? I thought it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. I mean, I uh, yeah, that I had. I was just not ready for how good that was going to be. That's right. That's right. Caught yeah, a lot right. of people out. Caught a lot yeah, of people out. I mean, it's far. like, why didn't you guys warn me that, you know? Yeah. And I also thought the same about the, the last season of uh, of Strange New... Uh, Strange New Worlds. Yeah. That, that singing episode um, still blows me away. Still I, I resonates. Think it, still I think resonates. it's one of the most uh, brilliant Star Trek episodes ever made. That's awesome. The, the Star Trek musical. Well, it's uh, Picard did so well that I think they're going to give him his movie. He wants a movie. He wants one more movie. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Why not? I mean, um, yeah, yeah. People going to watch it. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, of course, I'm going to go see it. People going to spend. But yeah, that that was. Um, and yeah, my my wife is not really. You know, uh, she kind of jumped into it late, and so. We're watching Picard, and I'm like, okay, well, okay, that's a cue, and and I'm having to explain, you know, some real fundamental things. No, that's a changeling. See, the changeling's and blah 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 blah, and uh, I, I'm sure she must think I'm nuts that I know all this, but uh, <laughs> wow. But anyway, wow, wow. Yeah, I'm also a big uh, Doctor Who fan. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. good, good, good. Well, that's fantastic. So. Um, that's, that's pretty much, we've covered, we've covered all bases here. I really yeah. enjoyed our, our conversation. Yeah, um, likewise. You're, you're, you're awesome. And I look forward to you, uh, uh, participating at the festival where you, where you can, um, we've got three panels this, this season. You did get our email on this. Um, yes. Yeah. I think I signed up for, uh, to go to them. Um, okay, yeah. good, good, good. All yeah. right. Well, awesome, Rodrigo. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Well, thank you so much for, for doing this. No, all, all you guys are doing a great festival. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I, I, I can only imagine how much work it is. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, we, we aim to please and, you know, it's, it's small enough where it can adapt these different situations that are thrown at us. Um, we're only doing two days really this year, which is, what we did two years ago um which was okay but i prefer a three-day three-day event and um you know so we'll see we'll see how it all pans out uh there are high hopes there are way too many films on the roster <laughs> so it's going to be a compressed a very compressed event well i look forward to geeking out and seeing as much as i can yeah there's there's some really good film man but that's that's the reason why it's it's so compressed because we even we even Typically, we we bring on every film we like, every film we like, we bring it on. Uh, but this year, we actually cut. Even though we've got a full schedule, we still cut twenty about twenty films. We cut that really should have been shown, hmm. and um, you know, so that's where it is. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. See you in a few okay. days. Likewise, definitely. Looking forward. Bye for now. <laughs>